If I tell you that you can make anything you can imagine a reality, what would it be? Hmm? You don't know yet. I should start first? No. Oh, fine. From me it would be the blue or sword. Oh, but I know king. Shiny sword, my diamond. The long, slender blade. The thorny, icy vines. The precious blue rose. When I first laid eyes on this sword, it was love at first sight. At that moment, I knew I just wanted it back. However, there was a glaring issue. Death does not exist in our world. But I wasn't gonna give up just yet. Ever since that day, I went on a journey. A journey to make the blue rose sword in my dreams a reality. With the use of failure, just trying over and over and over, I think I figured it out. While going through all the different possibilities out there, I found this insane combination of CAD and 3D printing. A tool that you can use to draw anything in your mind, that's CAD, and a tool that can make any drawing a reality, that's 3D printing. You guys thinking what I'm thinking? Because we're onto something here. And now, I'm ready to bring the Blue Rose Sword to real life. Will I make it this time? Or will I fail again miserably? Sa, Hajimarozi. So basically, to build our Blue Rose Sword, we are gonna be using that thing. It's called a 3D printer, by the way. This thing is actually a really smart machine that has insane building potential. It's automatic as well. Like you could literally AFK while this thing is building your sword. But despite the insane features this 3D printer has, in the end it's still a printer. It basically does not know what to build unless you tell it what to do. And so how do you tell it what to do? You do that with a digital sketch, a 3D model. CAD. To build this CAD model of the Blue Rose Sword, I'm gonna be using this software called Fusion 360. Not sponsored by the way. This entire CAD model took me over 8 hours to do. Fun fact, I stayed up all night just to work on this model during an insomnia session. It was absolute pain. I was just fueled by the desire to get this sword done, which also caused the insomnia in the first place. Now I'm just gonna share the model of the sword with you guys so you guys don't have to go through the same pain I went through. <laughs> and now that we have a decent model, we can get to printing. Before we get to that, we're gonna have to tell our printer how we're gonna print our parts. This process is called slicing. To do that, I'm gonna use my good old favorite software called Cura. To export the files from Fusion 360, just do this, 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 and this. And now we got a list of parts to print. In this software, we can tell our printer how to orient the parts, how much material goes into the print, as well how fast the printer should go. Now, I wanted this build to be special, so I've decided to use some of these. This is a filament spool. It's the material that we're gonna use to print our sword. Usually I'd go with a solid color, but this time I wanted to use this very specific filament to create a blue translucent look on some of the parts. If you're wondering, this filament is called Iceland Blue by Filamentum. Not sponsored by the way. Now, this is where things get awfully specific. To create this beautiful transparent look, we need to make sure there's no gaps in between the layers. In other words, 100% infill. I'm gonna apply the setting for this, 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 and every other part highlighted in blue. Once we're happy with the settings, we can save the file and transfer it to our printer. So first up, we're gonna print some blade section first. I'm gonna go with parts 1, 2, 3, and 4, aka the tag. I'm gonna use some leftover filaments from my other project to save some material. So I loaded the filament already. I'm just gonna wanna hit print, scroll to the file we wanted, and then just hit start. It'll take about 5 minutes for it to heat up, and then it'll start doing its leg. At that point, we might wanna stick around and see if the first layer is all good and then we can just go AFK afterwards. After spending 690 grams of filament and 70 hours, every single piece is finally complete. And now, ready to put them together. So, 
here's the plan. Because we're gonna paint the blade section and keep the blue parts as it is, we're only gonna do the blade for now and we're gonna leave the eyes out and assemble them after painting. Now I'd usually use one of these epoxy glues to piece my sword together. But today I feel like going savage mode. Let's weld this thing. It allows stuff to soften up as well as it does allow them to melt. Using a soldering iron, I'm gonna melt the edges, letting them liquefy and fuse them together. It's actually pretty similar to that badass traditional metal welding. Because our blade is put together using its own material, this will give it a much tougher and more rigid bond, albeit ugly. Now that I think of it, it actually saves me around 10 euros for every project because I don't have to apply too much glue. If you're lacking material in some parts, just grab some leftover filaments. This is another way to putting them to good use. You know what guys? I feel like an absolute badass right now. I used to watch my father building a bunch of stuff out of metal for his garden. Like he would weld a bunch of stuff on his own. Now I'm a welder myself. God damn it feels good bro. <laughs> now, I do have to warn you though. You're gonna need to wear a mask and gloves. This molten filament can emit some nasty fumes. It's better to do this in a well-ventilated room or just outdoors in general. Now, my case is a little bit different. I'm recording this at around 9pm, which is really freaking cold outside. So basically the soldering iron is not gonna stand a chance against the cold. So I'm gonna have to record this inside my bedroom. Which means I'm kinda gonna be inhaling fumes all night as I sleep. Wonder if I'm gonna wake up tomorrow morning though. Alright. So we got the blade finally all nicely welded up and uh, I think it looks pretty uh, ugly. Like there's no way we're gonna print the blade like this, it looks it looks all blobby. And... Which is why we're gonna have to clean up the sword where we're gonna be sanding it. Got my mask on, got my glasses on. <laughs> That's the other way around bro. And I wanna start the day off with something bro, something face, you know? It's usually a manufacturing process, you basically wanna get rid of the material as fast as possible. Which is why we're gonna use the delta sander. The flat surface on this thing is definitely gonna shred a bunch of plastic really, really fast. So we got everything we need. Sander, blade, lights. Hajimaruzi. So guys, it's already been 30 minutes. I've gotten like most of the blobs uh, sanded flat as you can see right here. You can see I can run my fingers through it without any friction. This is the kind of finish you want to get. And now we can start to move on to this slot right here. These pockets are gonna be the holes where the arrow lanyard thingy is gonna fit in. So we're gonna wanna widen these things up a little bit. Now, obviously this thing is gonna be too big to fit in there. Which is why I'm gonna have to switch to my Dremel. I'm gonna start things up with this bit so we can clean the walls as well as uh, flatten the surface at the same time. Ah oh, no, I forgot to charge. F Alright, fully charged. Lock and loaded. Let's fucking go. Oh, I nearly forgot something. We're also gonna have to like uh, sand the tank a little bit. Let's see how big this thing is right now. It's uh, 12.15 on this side and uh, also 12.15 on this side. Meanwhile, our handguard is around... That's an 11 flat. God damn. Dude, we got over one millimeter to shred off this thing. Almost there, boys. Ah, so close, bruh. I'm not sure if you guys could see it though. Uh, come on, focus your stupid camera. There's a little bit of burr right there. I think that's the only thing keeping these two parts actually fitting together. Let's get rid of that quick. Alright guys, little update. We've already ended up with one millimeter gap right now. I think it should already be close enough for us to glue it slash weld it. So let's move on. Hmm? What bro? Sus? No, I am sus bro, you sus. Mm. 
Uh, this one looks pretty good already. Anyway, here's a preview of what this thing looks like when it's assembled. Already looking pretty good though, except it's still black. Black rose sword. Black actually kind of looks good, bro, not gonna lie. All right, next up, we're gonna be sending some of the IC parts, particularly the handguard, because I've noticed for a few days, there's been like quite a few dirt that got in between the layer lines. And I think it's gonna be very difficult to keep it clean if we don't have like a flat surface finish on this thing. So we're gonna have to send it anyway. I guess we'll just do the handguard, uh, the linjet, basically everything except the handle rings and the rose. They're just way too fragile to do. So I'm finally done with this linjet pieces this thing took me about like two hours each and now let's move on to oh shit bro i swear this lenser part has got to be like absolute most painful part to actually do this thing it took me like i don't know i started working on it last night this thing took me about like eight hours to grind and polish up to this point which is pretty tedious but i'm just gonna quickly give you out the tips of what i did so you guys can skip all the pain i had to go through uh, basically, just break the layer lines with some sort of like the hardest uh, rotary bit you have on your collection, something like a diamond bit. And after that, just like quickly uh, sand it off with a thousand grit sandpaper. Now, you might notice that uh, it's gonna leave like a bunch of white areas on it. That's fine. Honestly, it would take me like, I don't know, two extra weeks to actually get this thing pristine with no white flakes whatsoever. Basically, like the these white flakes are actually just like film and dust on a rough surface, and it's really hard to get rid of. So I basically just had this thought of putting clear coat on it, and yeah, it works like a charm. But basically, by spraying the clear coat, it just like uh, makes it moist and then locks it in place as the clear coat dries. Check it out, bro. This thing looks like something you pull out of your ice tray. Damn, that's beautiful. Yo, bro. I've been out here sending these things for a total of about 17 hours now. I'm exhausted. So, uh, next up, we're gonna start by painting the blade. Where the f is the handle, bro? Oh, there it is. So next up, we're gonna be painting the blade as well as the handle, and then we're also gonna put it together. My sanity is at rock bottom right now, so if you guys would excuse me, I'll just take my fucking break before I completely lose my shit. Let's get back to grinding, boys. All right, boys, we're at the last step. Well, last two steps, actually. Now it's time to paint the blade and finally put the sword together. All right, boys, so I just got uh, the blade and the handguard welded on together. And I've also like sanded it quite a little bit just to keep it nice and clean. Now we're just gonna mask the handguard with some masking tape so we don't ruin this finish we worked so hard on. Then we can finally go and start and start painting. All right, I'm outside right now. Uh, it's a little bit cloudy, it's probably gonna rain soon. Let's just end this quickly. Okay, so the blade is finally dried and now it's time we glue everything together. To keep the assembly nice and clean, I'm gonna go with the usual epoxy glue. Yo bro, I'm so excited. You guys might wanna stay with me on this one, I promise you. This is gonna be very, very satisfying.
Mm. Nice weather, isn't it? All right, boys. So it's the next day. I waited overnight to, for the glue to finally dry, and now everything's rock hard and rock solid, which means the blue resort is finally completed, and we can now wield it for the very first time. You guys excited? Because I'm excited. All those years, the longing, the struggle, the hardships, they've all led me to this very moment. I waited a quarter of my life for this moment. All the hard work, they paid off. It's just beautiful. sorted my dreams. Never have I thought I'd see the day it manifest into reality. Now, y'all know the deal with fresh new source. It's time to take her out for a spin. Somebody's got lap. That was the Blue Rose Sword from Sale Alicization. I put my absolute heart and soul into making this sword as well as the video. Also, shout out to my boy Nukeman for helping me editing this sword demo scene. The result was also amazing and I'm really grateful for that. And uh, I really appreciate for all of you who's made it this far into the video. Because, man, it's one hell of a journey for me to be making this thing. Which I'd probably say is my masterpiece thus far. And uh, now for all of you who's made it this far, I have a little bit of a confession. I lied. Look, the heart disk was never broken. It's intact. I literally sprinkled a little bit of water on it just to make it look, look like I spilled water on it. But it's okay. Meanwhile, it's just a poor excuse to buy me more time to work on the Blue Rose video. But Bevan, like, what's the point? Well, here's the thing. I posted back in December that I've already completed the Blue Rose Sword and I've already shot it as well. And uh, quite frankly, I, I was working my ass off in December and I was pretty exhausted and I felt like I was half-assing this project. It's, it's not well done. It, it's no good. I didn't like it. Meanwhile, I wanted the sword and the video to be my masterpiece. I really just wanted to put my heart and soul into this one video, you know? Yeah, this is why I decided to just like make that cover up just to redo the video all over again. But in the end, I'm happy with the second shot. I'm completely satisfied with it and there is nothing I want to change about it. So I'm sorry for being selfish and for lying to you guys. Now I did say earlier that I actually put like my heart and soul into making this sword as well as the video, right? Well, yeah, that's because quite frankly, this thing right here is special to me, you know? This imaginary sword, it actually marks the beginning of my journey. It marks the start of me learning a bunch of all these stuff, you know? I had this in intense desire of just wanting to see the sword in real life and just owning one for myself. And... It was so intense that throughout the years, I held on tight to it. I 
learned a bunch of stuff. I went to trade school and uh, I looked a bunch of stuff on the internet. I looked at how, how to do this, how to do that. And it's just crazy, like the adventures that this plastic sword has brought me into, like dragged me through a bunch of insane learning lessons. And I learned a bunch of different skills just to make this one sword to the point where I would say I kind of know how to make just about anything now. I finally got to see the day it manifest into reality and I'm just really glad that you guys could actually be here with me to witness my dreams coming to reality. And throughout this journey, I learned quite an important lesson, you know. It's like if you have this one intense desire, this one crazy idea, just go for it, bro. You probably wouldn't expect like the crazy trip that this insane ambition is gonna take you. Maybe you'll end up like me. You'll just probably like fail a bunch of times and try a bunch of new stuff. But from there, you're that's actually how you get to learn new stuff. Try to figure out every day, every hour, every minute, just how am I gonna do this? How am I gonna do this? Just putting your entire mind into this one thing and to one day see it just happen manifest into reality if you got this stupid idea no matter just how crazy it is no matter how just unrealistic it is just start small like what's important is that you start and then once you start don't stop and you'll get there it, it's such a beautiful thing you know and i really want you all to experience it in your lives so now that i finally got to the point where i am i've already made my dream sort of reality like what am i gonna do i just realized this thing that there's a bunch of different stuff to make out there like a bunch of different anime weapons out there that i still want to make and there's probably a lot different other stuff that you guys want to see me build right now i've already made my own dreams a reality and now i want to make you guys a stream a reality that's basically what i want to do with my youtube channel i just want to build a bunch of different stuff while showing you guys what i learned and how i do it so comment down below what's next i know this is gonna be a long ass journey but i'll get to there one step at a time all we gotta do is just start i've already got a few projects in my list here so i'll see you guys in the next video where we're going to start building a bunch of other stuff until then say you